Thank you. All right, yeah. Mary, Mary Lane Mars, I want to talk about personalizing math and literacy activities. Yeah, Mary. Um, I find um, in my classroom that one way to personalize math for my students is to have them write. Um, we've done a little bit of journaling in the mornings with ROP and that made me reflect about some of the um, writing activities that I've come up with in my classroom and I had a really interesting evening, Sunday evening when I was going through the file I could access to see some of these because um, some of these I haven't used in a couple of years. Um, when we get to student examples at the end, these will be from students that I had four years ago um, at high school level, and I was like crying Sunday night because I really missed them. <laughs> so uh, if you would click the first slide, and there's a link on each slide, um, one of the things to make that personal, um, you can click on that link. Um, I asked students, would you rather be on the graph of this function or this function? This um, was supposed to be, um, there are two quadratic functions, one opens up, one opens down, um, different width and so on. But um, students would um, give me their reasons. Um, again, I, I'm not grading anything, but if they're understanding, and sometimes I, I'm not grading these. Um, I want this to be very low risk for the students and a way to personalize their experience with the math. Um, like some of the folks were talking at the at night, um, just to understand the beauty and the creativity um, and the freedom that they can have with math. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, one of the things, um, this is a trigonometry example, but I have done this also at the middle school. Um, they group terms together and I put the vocabulary words out there. Um, in this one, uh, you can also just do this with cards at a table um, and you can click on that link. Uh, so the, the terms it could, instead of a piece of paper, they could just be on the table on the index cards written. And here the students were asked to group them together in some way. There's no right or wrong way for them to do this. Um, but they are empowered to come up with their own decisions about how they would do that. Um, at the middle school, I've also had students see how much they could write, how many um, vocabulary words they could include in their journaling when they're writing. Um, so that was kind of a a fun thing to have kids do. Um, next slide. Um, one of the things, especially at, at middle school, but also at the high school I was at, um, it really pushed literacy. And um, I read, uh, there were a series of three books called Math Tools. Um, I know two of the authors were Ron Sting and Silver. And, um, I got this from them, or it was one of the shell books that I have about literacy and math. Um, and if you click, click on the link, um, I gave the kids um, some text from a textbook or maybe something online, and I have some statements that I've created. You can do this relatively quickly. Um, and then, what is the evidence in the text for that statement and the evidence against? Um, when I was at the high school level, I often told the kids, you, you have to learn to read your math book independently at some point. You, you, there are kids that can do, you may not understand your instructor or someone who's trying to explain it to you, you have to be able to read the math uh, textbook and, and um, understand what it's um, telling you, what, what that information is, what the text is saying. Um, here's the next slide. Um, again, this was a, uh, a reading activity. If you click on the link, um, one of the literacy strategies that our uh, language arts teachers talk about is questioning the author. So I um, tried to show an example of um, some questions that you might come up in a passage. Um, so we were doing the Pythagorean theorem, and who, who was this? And I tried to create some questions 
um, to give them as, a, as an example of they're used to question the author in some kind of fiction that might be reading. How do they do that in a piece of nonfiction? What kinds of questions might they uh, come up with? And uh, I find sometimes when we just give them a box to write in, they know it's a finite space and they don't have to go on and on. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, I also um, found, um, if you're talking with the language arts teachers, that cartoons are a huge um, and fun way to get kids to um, connect with content. And in order to understand the cartoon, they have to be aware of the content. Um, so I collect as many math cartoons as I can. I have a, an Instagram page that I use, and um, there's a link to it there. I don't know if it will pop up or not. But I use these as um, warm-ups in class sometimes. Um, it, it's students, I also posted today about our winter ski school uh, <laughs> teaching lesson so that my students would know that I did that. Um, but anytime I find something that I think it, that I think is cool and I think students would get a kick out of, um, I want them to know that math brings me joy. Um, it doesn't have to be a page of 25 problems that they have to do. That and all of these things that I've experienced here, it's been so fun to see my students from 10 years ago, from 30 years ago, um, from a couple of weeks ago, seeing these images and still having fun with them. So it's, it's just a huge highlight to me to have them see that, appreciate it. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, this, again, was from that book, um, Math Tools, um, creating a, a task, or a, four tasks, actually, where um, we're trying to reach different kinds of learners. So um, there's someone who's a, very concerned about their mastery. They want to know that they have, um, uh, that they're competent at that uh, material. Someone who needs to connect with the content in an interpersonal way. Um, someone who needs to dive into the understanding of the material, and someone who needs a creative and self-expressive avenue. Um, these take a little while to come up with, but um, if you have a grade level course team that believes in using tools like this, um, it can be uh, really rewarding and fun for you as a person to hear their ideas and keep go on. Next slide. Uh, this is a three-way tie. We can just go really quickly because I want to show you some of the student examples later. Um, when you, when you have different representations for functions, um, I think this was for quadrat or strategies for quadratic. It could be three forms of a linear equation. Uh, reinforcing um, some kind of graphic organizer, but again, where they're adding to the information, um, helping them to personalize what they. Uh, understand and, and make a connection, but have a little bit of creative freedom in how they might do that. And next slide. Um, if you would go to this, um, hold your thinking, and let's go to the student work. Um, University of Pittsburgh has some really awesome um, math and literacy um, strategies, and one of the examples that um, I learned um, from just reading their materials was um, an aspect called <coughs> wonder thinking. So this was one of the pieces from four years ago, so a low level algebra two juniors and seniors who had not had a lot of success. And we were reviewing for an assessment and I asked them as they were reviewing some of the problems, where do you want to stop and hold your thinking? What is it that was really significant to you as you were reviewing this? And um, it was just really special to have these kids actually stop and, and note that and, and um, actually put some phrases and sentences together over there on the right side. It meant a lot because I don't think um, that they had really done that before. And if you go to the next slide, um, this is the one that's really meaningful to me. If you would click on that. 
Um, this was a low-level Algebra 2 class. Again, this was a different section. And it was really late in the day, and it was a really tough group. It was a large group. And I had a number of um, students with special needs, and one of them was on the spectrum. And I think he was already 18. Um, he participated in this. He, the class was awesome. They included him on all of the group work that we did. Um, they were working with rational equations, and I, I just really was so afraid of, of teaching this topic. Um, and I asked them some questions as they were working through some problems. This wasn't the first time that they had done this, but I really wanted them to think deeply about where they were getting anxious and what strategies would they use to push through that anxiety and that fear of these really difficult equations. So they had an equation they were working on, and I asked them, or just these open-ended questions. I know that um, I chose, I have no idea what they were going to write. Um, I can explain how to get the new equation. Um, if you were stuck, you could try. And then um, this is how I solved the problem. And um, I don't know what this, the, something you have to figure out, I don't know what that part is. Um, if you would scroll through, I think the third student example is the one I really, this one. This is Brad. Brad understood my jokes. <laughs> Um, the fact that he wrote this stuff on here was just so awesome. Um, we got some denominators. It's <laughs> <laughs> really touching. Um, Chad is coming up in place of uh, 